Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making Granny's Ham and Tater Soup. Now this is one of those recipes that really should be used as a guide more than as the law because there are so many substitutions you can make in this. You can make it with any kind of ham, you can use any kind of milk in it, you can use any variety of potatoes, and you can season it pretty much with anything that you want to. Now for seasoning, I'm using some vegetables and I'm going to do like a vegetable stock in this because it doesn't I don't like to pour canned stock and stuff in my homemade soup. That kind of defeats the purpose of having homemade soup to me. So I'm using some chopped up carrots, chopped up celery, chopped up onions, and chopped up green peppers. And butter. And just a little salt and pepper. And that's going to season it. And of course I've got some ham in it. And that's kind of going to season it too. And I have about... Uh, eight ounces of ham here and I've got about four cups of potatoes that I've chopped up and how big you chop your ham and your potatoes is entirely up to you. You can have this really chunky or you can have it creamier and I'm going to do something a little bit creamier and the only other thing you need is some water. Now how you cook this is going to affect the flavor. You can Put water in and put all your vegetables in and just start boiling it and boil it. But that's not going to give you the same flavor as if you get your pot hot, which is what we're going to do. And then you put your butter in it and you get your butter hot. And then you put all these vegetables in your pot. And you can even go ahead and put your ham and your potatoes in there and kind of saute all of those in the butter. That's going to give you a totally different flavor than if you just boil it. Now, you can make this, I said you can use any kind of ham. You can use any kind of leftover ham that you have. And depending on, you know, your budget and what you have available and how many people you need to, you have to feed, you can use anywhere from four ounces to a pound of ham in this. I mean, if you're on a really tight budget and you've got to feed a crowd, um, you can just use a little bit of ham in this and use it more as a flavoring. So you don't have to have a whole bunch of ham. I've only got about eight ounces, but like I said, if you've got a lot of leftover ham that you need to use, um, maybe you made a ham for Easter or Thanksgiving or Christmas, and you wanna use that extra ham, go ahead and throw it in here because you can use a lot or you can use a little. So anyway, like I said, we're gonna start with our butter and we're gonna get it hot first. And I'm using a whole stick of butter in this because a lot of my flavor is gonna come from my butter. And also I don't want my vegetables to stick if I'm gonna saute them. Now I said I'm using green peppers and onions and celery and carrots. You can put a whole lot more carrots in this if you want to. You can put big chunks of carrots and big chunks of potato in it. And it's very good that way. But I'm just using my carrot kind of as a seasoning. And generally speaking, you want at least a half a cup of all of your chopped vegetables. If there's something here you don't like, leave it out. If there's something you want to put in it, like if you really like mushrooms, you could put mushrooms in this. You could put hot peppers in it. Um, the possibilities are just endless for things that you can flavor this with. For years, I would not eat anything with celery in it for most of my life, but I have found that as I get older i really really like the flavor that a little chopped celery adds especially in soup it makes vegetable stocks much richer and much tastier the flavor it adds is just wonderful and if you chop it fine you're not going to even see it or taste it in what you're cooking it's just going to accent that flavor so and you can see here i've probably got almost a cup of bell peppers but that's like half of a bell pepper and I just chopped up half of it and I've probably got almost a cup of chopped up carrots at least three quarters of a cup so how much you put just really is what you want that's why I said this is a a guide recipe it's not really something that you have to make exactly but if you want exact measurements do at least half a cup and like I said if there's something here you don't like 
just leave it out because it will cook up just fine without any of this. If you don't have an onion, you can use onion powder, you can use dried onions, um, and the green peppers are just optional. They just add a lot of flavor. The same thing with the celery. It's totally optional. It just adds a lot of flavor. You could certainly put some garlic in here. Um, just pretty much whatever you want. Okay, my butter is hot and it's actually starting to brown a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump these vegetables in. Just all of them all at once. Now, if you actually let your butter brown before you add your vegetables, it will change the flavor of your whole soup. So like I said, what you put in your pot is gonna affect the flavor as much as how you cook it. I'm also gonna go ahead and add in my ham now. Now, if you have like a ham bone left over where you did a bone-in spiral ham or something, you can put that ham bone in a pot with enough water to cover it and cook it until all of the meat falls off of the bone and then take the bone out and you can use that to make this soup. You wouldn't use the water though. The water would already be in your um, ham bone where you had cooked the meat off of the bone. So you can make this soup with just a leftover ham bone if you want to. And putting the ham in here with the vegetables and letting it saute a little bit totally changes the flavor of the ham. And I really like this soup better with a saltier ham, but if you have a sweet ham left over, some um, uh, brown sugar ham or honey ham or something, it'll work just fine in this. But if you're buying ham specifically for this, something that's uh, plain and salty is better. Um, if you go in the deli, if they have an all natural ham or a um, something maybe that just says cooked ham that's usually a little bit better in this and you can just get you know a slice however thick get it maybe quarter inch thick or so and dice it up and put it in this or you could use a ham steak in it just anything you could even use um, canned ham in this or spam or something like that and make it with that if you're making this out of your pantry and trying to use things that you have stocked and I'm even gonna go ahead and add my potatoes. And I'm gonna cook all this just in the butter until it kinda starts to um, brown a little bit and until it kinda starts to get tender just a little bit. And that's gonna let the flavor from that butter get into all those vegetables. But I'm not gonna stir my potatoes up yet because I want that ham and those peppers and onions and celery to brown a little bit more before I stir it all up. And I'm just gonna put the lid on it. And you know, I said I was gonna add enough water to cover my vegetables a little bit. I'm gonna do that later after it's browned. So we're just gonna give that a minute and I'm not even gonna add any salt and pepper right now. I'm gonna add that when it gets closer to the end of cooking because you will use less if you wait until the end of cooking because cooking um, your spices like your salt and your pepper and any other spices, it actually mutes the flavor of them. So you can get by with using much less um, if you wait until the end of the cooking process or closer to the end. Now, I said we could use any milk in this and you can use any milk. This is a good recipe for your canned evaporated milk. Uh, and you can use anything from heavy cream all the way to skim milk in it. The more fat in your milk, of course, the richer uh, your broth is going to be when you get your soup done. I have some half and half today. I had half and half that I needed to use. And um, this is certainly one of those times where if we've got something that needs to be used, we need to use it. And that's kind of the idea behind soups like this. Um, when my granny would make stuff like this, she would use what she had in it. And uh, there are a million soup recipes like this where you use what you have. And that's really what soup started out as. It, it was a food that you made with what you had. So, like I said, this is a recipe that really should just kind of be a guide. While our pot's sitting here and that's all sauteing in that butter for just a minute, I want to share a few more Christmas cards with y'all. I'm still getting a few of them. Um, this one is from Bruce and Susan. 
has a nice note in it. Everybody's writing notes in them, which is really nice. This card is from Deb and she says, Happy New Year. This is our first video of the new year. So I want to wish all of you a very happy new year. Uh, this one is from Louise. And again, it has a very nice letter in it. From Marsha. This is cute. Um, it is from Mark and Missy or Melissa. And uh I'm not sure who drew their picture there, but it's adorable. And this is from Karen and Clarence. From Julie, and Julie put a little bookmark in it. I use the bookmarks mostly in my cookbooks, and I like um, the Christian bookmarks, and I stick them all in the cookbooks, and it's another way just to, those little reminders like i said about some of the things like the calendars and the little magnets and stuff i really like stuff like that this one here i just got out of the mail and it was actually mailed a month ago so i'm not sure what's going on with the post office but um it's from mary ann and again there's a note in it i have not returned this one yet but i will send this one out um, tomorrow to mary ann and all the rest of these, you should be getting one. They have been mailed. If you sent me a card, I've mailed one back. But give it some time because, like I said, Mary Ann's card was mailed a month ago and I just got it. And these, um, I actually got two of them and they have notes in them. They are from Gail and Gail drew these. And they are, I mean, <laughs> They're, I'm like the least artistic person I know, and I love stuff like this. i give anything if I could do stuff like this, but I can't. And I can tell that she spent a great deal of time sketching those, so that's very special. Thank you, Gail. And like I said, I will keep them all forever. So my kids are going to have a lot to sort through one day. <laughs> So thank you all for the Christmas cards. It really has been fun going to the mailbox and taking these out. And, you know, like I said, they continue to come a few still. And if you send a card, I'll return it. And it is fun to get something like that and to know that somebody's thinking about you. So thank you all very much for the cards. I have enjoyed it so much this year and I can't wait till next Christmas so we can do it again. Okay, let's kind of check on our soup here. Everything is already starting to cook and it's starting to get tender already. Um, oh, it smells so wonderful. But we're gonna go ahead and give it a little stir and get some of our potatoes down in there so that the flavor of the onions and the ham and the peppers and all that stuff can get in them. Um, there's not much moisture left in the pot, but I'm not gonna add my water just yet. I really want those flavors to get incorporated before I add the water so that the potatoes taste like everything else and the stock is really rich. I mean, we're even gonna use the potatoes to kind of add to the vegetable stock because that's the only stock in this. We're not gonna add any canned stuff to it. Okay, I'm just gonna cover it again and let it continue to sit there and kind of bubble in that butter and just in the liquid that's coming out of the vegetables. Okay, while your soup is um, sitting here and kind of simmering in its own juices and um, cooking in the butter, you do want to keep an eye on it and you want to stir it occasionally. You want to make sure it doesn't dry out because if it dries out, it'll burn really quick. But um, just stir it occasionally when it looks like the vegetables are starting to cook and your butter's kind of soaked into them. At any point after that, you can go ahead and add your water. Um, and how brown you cook this is entirely up to you. You can really brown this. I mean, you know, cook it until it gets a, a real brown color, almost like fried potatoes or something. And that will change the flavor. But it's just up to you and, you know, play with it a little bit and 
kind of see how you like it better the what taste you prefer but my vegetables are certainly not cooked yet especially my potatoes they're still fairly firm and um, they're not breaking down you're gonna have to cook this until the potatoes break down so what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add just enough water to cover them good and that's gonna take anywhere from one to two cups of water it just kind of depends but I want to get them all submerged good about like that just a little bit above the top and then I'm just gonna let it sit here and simmer until my potatoes are really really soft and at this point you shouldn't even need to stir it much because it has enough liquid in it that it's not gonna burn on the bottom unless you've got a really th really thin pot and if you have a really really thin pot sometimes even though you have plenty of liquid in your pot, it will tend to kind of burn on the bottom. So if you're using a really thin pot, you might have to stir it. Other than that, you can just let it sit there and simmer until those potatoes start to fall apart. I said a couple minutes ago that this was our first video of uh, 2021. And in this new year and in these strange times that we're living in, I think it is more important now than ever that we as Christians show the world our faith. Um, we need to let the world see the hope that we have in Jesus. We need to let the world see the peace that we have in our heart because we know that He is in control. Because you see, no matter what's going on, God has not changed. He is still the same as He was yesterday, and He will be the same tomorrow. He is still working all things for the good of them who love Him. And He has not left us because His Word promises us that He will not leave us nor forsake us. And um, Psalm 35 it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. And God's word also teaches us that if we seek him first, that he will give us all that we need and that he will take care of us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So our put God first, that needs to be stronger in our lives than it ever has been before because we're going to need it to get through this. And like I said, we need to show the world our faith. We need to more than ever let the world see God in us because if they don't see God in a Christian, they are not going to see him. They're never going to find him. So it's your job and it's my job to let our light shine so that the world can come to know God. So with that being said, we're going to do something um, different this year. And I'm not sure, you know, how we're going to continue it. Um, with the uncertainty of some internet stuff that's going on, I can't commit to much more than January 2021. So this is for January 2021. If the need arises and the Lord provides, then maybe we can continue it on past that. But in January 2021, because I have gotten several comments on the channel um, that people had left over the years where their oven is broken, or they don't have an oven, they can't afford to get a new oven, um, maybe where they live at is not even big enough to have a full-sized oven. It's important that people be able to cook food at home now because we are living in some rather uncertain and trying times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give away two of these in January 2021 and this is not a contest type giveaway 
What this is, is if you don't have an oven, if you don't have a way to bake or, or cook food, we want to send you one of these. Now, it might not be this exact brand. It will be a larger countertop oven like this. It'll have a couple of racks and it'll have um, convection bake, uh, maybe air fry. This model does have air fry, but there's several models that are available and they go in and out of stock. It will be shipped directly to you. We will purchase it and ship it to you, but it'll be a model that's around $100. And I know some of them get really, really pricey, but that, this is what we can afford to do. And we can afford to send out, like I said, two of them in January. And I can't promise anything past that. So if you need an oven, please leave a comment on this video, not any other video, and only leave one comment because they're gonna have to be sorted through and just say, I need an oven. Start it with that because I'm gonna search I need an oven and I'll send out two. You'll have to give me your address and I'll get them shipped to you. Now, anytime we do stuff like this, we usually have other people who offer to help. Please don't send me money to help with this. We don't have a staff, so we don't have any way to handle that money and make sure it's distributed correctly. If you want to help with this, Look in the comment section on this video and look for those comments that say, I need an oven. And you reply to that comment, get the address, and ship the oven. And I'm going to be shipping these probably from Walmart because they usually have the most in stock and they have them at the most reasonable price. So, you know, you can ship them from wherever you find them. But you try if you want to help with it, try to get something that's like this, that's you know big enough that you can actually stick a casserole dish in or something and cook. Um, when the Lord kind of laid this need on my heart, I kind of had um, senior citizens who were living alone in mind um, because they're mostly the ones who have commented and said, I don't have an oven anymore and I can't afford to replace my oven. But I know sometimes there are families who, for different reasons, end up not having an oven or a way to cook. And I was actually in that situation once when all my kids were small. Um, we didn't have an oven for about six or seven months. So if you're in the situation where you need it, no matter who you are, no matter you know what your age or whatever, just leave the comment. Like I said, it's not a contest, and we're going to pick who we send it to randomly. We're going to pray about it and then um, actually print off the names and draw them and let God choose who the two that we send out go to. And like I said, if the Lord provides, maybe we'll be sending out more later. But right now, all I can commit to is two. So if you need it, leave the comment. And if you can help, look through the comments and pick out a name and you get an address and if I see you've commented and you've got an address and you're shipping an oven to somebody I won't pull that name out when I draw and send mine out so and you know we're not gonna like ask you to fill out anything or anything like that just please be honest it, this is not something where if you'd like to have a countertop oven this is for something if you need an oven so you know, continue to trust God, continue to pray for our nation, and continue to pray for our leaders, and show the world that you have God in you. Let's get back to our soup. Okay, once your potatoes get really done and they kind of start to fall apart, which mine are, now you want to go ahead and add your salt and your pepper or whatever else you want to season it with. And like I said, you can season this with about anything. Um, it's just what the, whatever flavor you like. I like it with just the vegetables and salt and pepper and the um, green pepper and the onion and the celery and all that stuff is going to add so much flavor to it. I'm probably using, no, oh, maybe half teaspoon of pepper. And the salt and the pepper is just to taste. And I'm going to put close to a teaspoon of salt in this. Um, 
and the salt will depend very much on the kind of ham you're using if you use something like country ham in this you're not going to want much salt because it is very very salty and you could use country ham in this with all those vegetables i want a little bit of salt now something else that you could put in this um, for the potatoes you could use the dried diced potatoes if you had some of those put back and you wanted to use some of those and you can even make this with instant potatoes or you can thicken it with instant potatoes now i like to take this little thing here or a potato masher and kind of bust up my potato chunks even a little bit smaller now if you want yours super chunky don't do this and um, if you don't do this, you might want to take a few of your potatoes out and mash them up and then add them back into it. Because the only thing that we're really using to thicken this with is the potatoes. And you can see it's very, very thick right now where the potatoes have cooked down and actually kind of dissolved in that vegetable broth. I mean, you could almost eat it with a fork right now. Okay, now I'm going to add my milk. And just whatever kind of milk you've got will work. And I'm going to stir that up. And I'm going to let it sit there and simmer until it comes back to a boil. And if you want this thicker, um, like I said, you can do a few mashed potatoes in it. You could also do a cornstarch slurry, or you could make a slurry and you could add um, a little bit of flour to your milk and um, add some milk and some flour in here, and that would thicken it. Now, if you use flour to make your slurry, you're going to want to cook it for a little bit longer because a lot of people say that they can taste the flour in it or in any kind of sauce or whatever that they use flour in to thicken it and they don't like that taste of raw flour so if you add a i don't know you'd want to add maybe two to four tablespoons of flour if you used flour stir that up in your milk while it's cold pour it in and make sure you boil it for probably three or four minutes to cook that flour so you don't have that raw flour taste. Doing it like this, or if you use the instant potatoes to thicken it, or a cornstarch slurry, you don't have to do that. You just have to heat it back up. Um, I do like to let mine simmer with the milk in it for just a couple minutes anyway, at least a couple of minutes, because the milk will actually thicken some too without anything in it. Now, how I adjust the thickness of my soup, um, or at least this kind of soup, is as it's simmering or coming back to a simmer after I've added my milk, I just take my spoon or whatever I'm using to stir it with and kind of mash up some of my potatoes just a little bit at a time by pushing the spoon on the edge of the pot and then giving it a little stir. And when it gets where I want it, I stop doing that. Um, and like I said, there's a dozen ways you can thicken it and it's up to you how thick you even want it. You might not want to thicken it at all. And you do want to keep in mind as it cools, it is going to thicken a little bit because of the starch in the potatoes. And if you add instant potatoes to thicken it with, be very, very careful because as they cool, they get really thick. So if you were going to add instant potatoes to thicken this, you would want to add them like a tablespoon at a time and stir it in and give it just a second to see what it's going to do. Don't dump in like a cup at all at once because you're going to end up with something you can slice instead of a creamy soup. But I think I've got mine about as thick as I want it, and it's definitely um, hot again. You know, the milk is hot, it's boiling. So I'm going to cut it off, and we're going to enjoy a bowl. Now, when 
my kids were all home or if I was making this for several people, I would make sure I had some shredded cheese and some sour cream to serve with it on the side. If you are making it just for yourself and you want the cheese in it, you can add the cheese to it now and that'll actually thicken it up a little bit too. And you could even add the sour cream to it now. But not everybody likes that. Um, Brett's really not a very big fan of sour cream and he doesn't like cheesy soups much either. So I always serve it on the side and this soup is excellent without the cheese. It's good with cheese and it totally changes the flavor. So if you're making it for yourself, you might want to do it with cheese one day and without cheese another day. So if you have it on the side, you can change it. You can see what our soup looks like here. It does still have some pretty good sized chunks of potatoes in it. And like I said, you can mash it up more if you want it mashed up more, make it creamier. Um, you could take a potato masher before you add your milk and really mash the potatoes up fine. But that's just up to you. Or you can do bigger chunks of ham and bigger chunks of potatoes and big chunks of carrots and have a really chunky soup. And still use that same vegetable broth to season it with. And, you know, you've got all that flavor without the canned broth or without any bouillon or anything like that. And it has a much cleaner, more natural, more vibrant flavor. To me, when you add the canned broth and stuff to soup, that's kind of all you taste. You're going to taste the ham in this and you're going to taste the vegetables in this. Even if you add the cheese and the sour cream, you're still going to taste that. And like I said, that totally changes it. So if you're making it for yourself or your empty nesters like Brett and I, and you're gonna be having it for a couple of days, do this stuff on the side and that way you can have a different soup tomorrow. <laughs> now thank y'all so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first. Thank you.